guys, CTB Celtic Mod over here, and I got the Nexus 5X to do a review. I have to say I was super psyched when I got the Nexus 5X, but there are some things that really, really irk me right off the bat. And I know that's that's really bad to say, but I want to get all the bad stuff out of the way first before I get onto the good stuff. So, first things first right out of the box so there could be some changes software wise that could probably fix some of these problems that I'm going to come across right now. So there are a couple of issues that I had right away. Um, first of all, uh, the gallery. Um, when you're taking pictures, it's not intuitive enough that you have to double tap. There are a couple times where you have to triple tap, quadruple tap for it to register. It's just, uh, there's not a lot of sensitivity, I guess, in the gestures that are used in the gallery for that to recognize. Also, you can't pinch to zoom in a 4K video, which just, I don't know why, it just irks me a lot because if I'm shooting 4K video in high definition, I should be able to pinch to zoom into the video so I can see the details. That's kind of the whole purpose of shooting a high resolution video so that I can see the details later. But the stock gallery, I haven't really tried a third party gallery, maybe that solves the problem. Um, the stock gallery doesn't allow you to do that. Now again, a software update possibly could fix that. It's something minor, but that's really, really annoying. So continuing on to number two, um, is the camera setup. It's not the camera per se, it's not the app itself, but the options available. So if you are a manual mode user like I am, there's not that in this. There's virtually no options to choose from. You have literally three. Um, it's auto mode, but the scene will decide whatever it needs to use, which is just HDR basically. And you have HDR on and HDR off. So there's a one button that basically just chooses HDR, whether it should be on and off or whether it should just be automated. That's about it. There's no ISO, there's no white balance, there's none of that. Um, also, in the selection on the side, is just the options of like lens blur, panoramic, and scene modes basically. And this is four or five to choose from. Now, again, you could use a third party camera app that would probably give you more options because Google's pretty open in using the APIs like that. But if you're just a point and shoot user, I think it's great because it does take pretty good pictures given enough light. Um, there's an issue with HDR though. So if you were to shoot in low light, you have to make sure that HDR is on or automated um, because if it's off it gives you like watered down completely noise leveled meaning the low spots um, completely like destroy the picture uh, in some cases there's like complete color misbalance it looks like it's a black and white in some sense um, so you have to have HDR on with it on however the low light um, given that there is some kind of light coming in uh, whether it be a street lamp or, or a corridor light or anything else near the area, it does a pretty good job. Um, now, there's lots of sharpness, but then again, most low light um, phones taking pictures does tend to lose that. There's quite a bit of noise, but I have to say, detailing um, saturation of colors is pretty spot on, I have to say. Um, it could use improvements, again, software updates could further improve it. But as a point and shoot, it does a pretty good job. I can't can't really deny it. In super super low light, however, in like pitch black, it's not probably a contender even. So my contender would obviously be the king of, for now. The king right now is the LG G4, and I think that's a fair comparison to take the best smartphone and compare it to that. So it's not in top three, but possibly top five. Because you have the S6, iPhone, etc., etc., as they are camera competitors. Um, but yes, it's not a disappointing camera outside of low light. But overall, I'll give it a 7, 7.5 out of 10. Moving on to the good stuff about the Nexus 5, there's a ton. So, right off the bat, the way it feels, how light it is as a 5.2 inch device is awesome. I have to say, the fingerprint scanner in the back is something that I thought I would not be using because I have used fingerprint scanners in the past the Atrix from Motorola and I've used the S5 that had the fingerprint and it, the other fingerprints from the iPhone I've barely used but I have used that as well um, but I have to say this is 
pretty intuitive keeping the middle button in the back just like the LG they have the power button in the back as well um, there's another phone that had a fingerprint scan I believe it was the HTC that used it or the the Huawei Mate 8 as I believe that also has it and um, they have a perfect positioning for your middle your middle finger your first finger um, when you want to unlock the phone and it's pretty instantaneous if you just place it on the back it opens up right away there's no lag whatsoever it's so accurate that I have to say I'm gonna give it a 9.9 9 out of 10 I never thought that I would use a fingerprint scanner but after using this one I don't see myself not using it especially on this Nexus next thing would be the screen even though it's a 1080p screen I have to rate this pretty pretty high color saturation brightness and it's lowest setting Low setting meaning like when you're in a dark room and you want to put the brightness all the way low. So that's convenient that it goes to its lowest setting which is lower, lower than most phones. And um, the other thing about this was the laser autofocus for the back. It helps the camera quite a bit. But more importantly I found that concerning about the camera hump in the back is not really an issue. Uh, I thought that it would be because according to the pictures it looked a lot bigger than it is. But it's actually not even really noticeable once you start using the device it's uh, really minor you just gotta be careful that putting it down on a non-flat device you might you know get some dirt or or possibly scratch it I know it's, it's covered with like Gorilla Glass or uh, Sapphire the weight and size this is just perfect like I don't know why more manufacturers are not making devices that are this light and this easy to hold this is a one-handed device if you had your doubts about it uh, I would opt for this over the 6P just based on size and weight. Um, it's about 30, 35 grams lighter than the 6P. Moving on to the third and final thing, the good stuff. Um, the speaker grills in the front. Even though I would have liked to have the dual speakers, they have the space for it. I mean, it's right there. They could have just added it in. But for, I guess, pricing purposes, they opted out of that. I have to say the single speaker however on the bottom is pretty loud and loud like decibel readings or whatever is not really important as a qual quality of sound. Um, it's no HTC boom sound by any means but it is pretty clear even on its loudest setting. I put it up on the max and uh, watch some HD videos, listen to some music and pretty good job actually. I was kind of surprised. I thought it would be a little tinny and a little washed out but that actually was improved since the last Nexus. It Nexus 5. Um, so yeah, I would definitely pick these up if you're looking for a mid-range, mm, not exactly budget friendly because it's breaking the $500 mark when you convert it into say here in Canada it went up to about 600 something uh, to the door. Uh, so it's not exactly budget friendly but it's a fair price and the 808 Snapdragon if anybody has any questions about that performance wise it suffers nothing because the 808 is perfect you don't have any heating issues as such I know there's a 2.0 version of the 810 that actually has apparently solved that issue but the 808 if you're looking for a performer this can do it for you uh, I haven't done really high intensity gaming but my everyday usage you know a couple apps here and there that use a fair amount of uh, multitasking and stuff like that not a problem, no lag. Um, the 2 GB of RAM, I would have liked to see 3, but I guess with Marshmallow, it seems to utilize that far better than Lollipop and previous versions of Android. So I don't see any problems with having multiple tabs open and lag and such like that. So yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend this phone for someone who wants to be a one-handed user and not a big-handed device. So in conclusion, the good stuff about the phone, fingerprint scanner, the lightweight, the body, the build, um, quality, uh, performance, everything is good. Even the camera is a little above average. Not not the greatest, but good enough. Um, and I think the small flaws could easily be fixed. But everything else that comes as the phone as is, is a great product. Um, is it worth it? I got the 32 GB. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it would be about $600. That's the 32, not the 16. Um, that's after the conversion because the US to Canadian but if you are in the States however I think that it's a great pickup um, for that price uh, you could opt for the 6P if that's your thing I think that's more bang for buck really uh, but it, then it's going into the 
higher price range and not really budget friendly. Um, so the choice at the end of the day is yours. Uh, I think the 5X has made all the right steps in improvement. Um, there are a few things that need to be sorted out, but they're literally software issues. That's it for now, guys. Um, hopefully you liked the review of the 5X. Um, hopefully you found this helpful in some sense, whether or not you should buy it or not. Um, and stay tuned for my next video. Like and subscribe as usual. Add any comments below. I'll try to answer those. And that's pretty much it. So I'll see you till the next time. See!